everyone so in this video we're going to talk about chest x-ray technique and technical factors although that the chest PA is the most common and seems to be the most simple radiography there are many factors that we should uh, consider during the procedure to perform a proper and diagnostic chest x-ray right, first and foremost before any radiology procedure we need to explain the patient that uh, what we're going to do, how to perform the x-ray. And also, uh, patients need to know the risk factors. Uh, you should explain about uh, the pregnancy conditions and so on. So patient preparation for chest x-ray includes uh, the removal of all opaque objects from the chest and neck region, like bras, jewel, and uh, sometimes patients come with chest leads, whether to remove them if possible and also a uh, long curve may be visible as an artifact, especially when we are using a modern digital imaging system. So I kindly ask the patient to draw up or drop the hair across the shoulder to avoid superimposition. So to ensure all opaque objects are removed, the usual procedure is to ask patient to remove all clothing and then put on a hospital gun. Then place a lead shield between the tube and the patient pelvis to avoid unwanted dose to gonads. Okay, so regarding the patient position for chest PA, always try to examine patient in the upright position, either stand or seated. So the diaphragm is at the lowest position and then air and uh, fluid levels are visible. So kindly ask the patient to stand in front of the image receptor and then adjust the IR just five centimeter above the relaxed shoulders. And also check the mid-sagittal plane to the midline of the IR. Have the patient to stand straight in a way that the weight of the body equally distributed on both feet. Then ask the patient to flex the elbows and to rest the back of the hands on the hip. This movement will position the clavicle just below the apex of the lung, so they will be visible to evaluate. Then ask the patient to extend the chin to avoid mandible superimposition on the chest region and finally rotate the shoulder forward. So with this, the scapula will rotate outward and laterally to reduce the scapula superimposition with the lungs. Central ray. Central ray should be perpendicular to image receptor at the level of T7. You can just find uh, the T7 by touching the inferior border of a scapular angle. Then adjust the collimation on IR size. Careful collimation is important in chest x-ray. If you open the collimation widely, you just simply increase the patient dose and also scatter radiation, which will affect on the image quality. As we are taking x-ray from a big part in terms of the size, you should take a minimum SID of 72 inches or 180 cm to decrease the magnification of the heart and also to record the details of the thoracic structures. The inspiration technique is of a great importance in chest x-ray. Exposure should be made after the second full inspiration. To ensure maximum expansion of the lung, so before starting the x-ray, you should carefully explain for the patient and practice with him a couple of times to make sure that he knows exactly what to do for certain conditions such as pneumothorax or to evaluate the foreign bodies, we should perform a second x-ray in expiration condition. Alright, so let's talk about technical factors that are kilovoltage and milliamp per second. Okay, so as you know, in chest region, we have different parts with different opacities. We have bone, we have soft tissue like heart, and we have lung, which is filled with air. So a sufficient contrast is required to demonstrate the many shades of gray. To do so, a high kilovoltage is need, usually 100 to 120 for a normal adult patient. Lower kilovoltage will result high contrast, which we don't want. We cannot visualize the lung markings, especially in the areas behind the heart and lung bases. And as a general rule, you know that high kilovoltage, more than 100, requires the use of grid lines and bucky. Ex exceptions are mobile chest projections, which the image receptor 
is without grids, but this is not recommended, just in some conditions, for example, patient is completely bed rest in hospital, so we need to do a portable chest x-ray. And uh, let's talk about exposure time and milliampere range. Generally, chest x-ray requires the use of a high milliampere and a short exposure time to minimize the chance of motion artifact. And uh, you know, we cannot give an exact number for milliampere second, as it totally depends on the imaging system we are using. Okay, so we've done the chest x-ray and uh, here are some of the factors that you can check to ensure that the x-ray is properly done. Evidence of proper collimation, from top to bottom you should clearly visualize the apex and the bases of the lungs, the costophrenic angles. No rotation, even a slight amount of rotation results in distortion of size and shape of the heart and hilum. Therefore, it's important that there be no rotation. To ensure this from the image, there are many ways like sternal ends of the clavicle should be equidistant from the spine or trachea should be visible in the midline or you can simply evaluate the lateral borders of the ribs on each side which again need to be at equal distance from the vertebral column. Okay, the other important thing is a proper shoulder rotation which demonstrated by scapular borders outside the long fields. Proper inspiration, to determine the degree of inspiration, you should be able to identify and count the ribs. The first and second ribs are more difficult to locate and as a general rule for average adults patients is to show at least 10 posterior ribs in the long area above the diaphragm. Exceptions are patients with pulmonary diseases and trauma that may be not unable to inspire deeply. Sharp outlines of heart and diaphragm, fade shadows of the ribs and superior thoracic vertebra visible through the heart shadow. Lung markings visible from the hilum to periphery of the lung, which all demonstrated with uh, choosing proper exposure factors. Alright, that's it. If you like the video or you learn anything, just leave a comment or like and don't forget to subscribe us. Thanks again.